Let us now continue our session on estimation. In the earlier session, we saw what is function point. I said the function point is a measure of the size of the software product. To illustrate some of those particular concepts, let us now take an example of a marketing MIS. Imagine for the time being, there is a marketing organization which has countrywide operations. It has offices in several cities you know which are located at uh, different places all over india and each of these particular regions sells a wide range of products through several channels at the end of the month each of these regions is supposed to send a performance report to the head office you know and this report is basically a product wise sales summary for the month and it is a means of communication between the regional office and the head office, regional office and the head office. Okay. The report is sent to head office by different regions, by different means ranging from email to hand delivery. Now, at head office, we are required to summarize this particular data and also generate a database, you know, which can be used as a what called foundation for a limited decision support system for the top management. In the sense that some kind of an inquiry facility can be provided on this particular database. Okay. So, every month the proposed system will update the sales database okay, and generate some fixed number of reports as required and also provide an inquiry facility for the management's use as and when. So, five reports and an inquiry facility is the requirement. In addition to the sales file that we generate, our system will require to use a product file and the location file and both these particular files, let us assume they have been maintained by EDP department of the company. Okay? So, it is in this particular context now that you are required to develop a small software and basically give an answer to the current question that we have, how big is this particular software and obviously in turn, you know, how much will it cost and how long will it take to develop this particular software. Now, the easiest way to look at it would be as a data flow diagram. Now, let us look at the slides. Okay. So, there is a data flow diagram first level DFD drawn using Gaines and Sarsen's notation, you know, the boundary of the system is implied. Okay. So, except the two squares, you know, which are supposed to be the external entities, everything else is inside the system and you have one input and you have five outputs and an inquiry facility. There are three files and, you know, this cross hat indicates that there is a multiple depiction indicating that the file appears only once in the data dictionary, though it is shown twice in the diagram. So, based on this particular kind of a situation, now we were to calculate the number of functions that you have, you know, then a simple enumeration can be done. We have a monthly sales report coming as an input and five summary reports and an inquiry and a sales file as a ILF and a product file and a location file as a EIF. So, if you again look at the slide, 
we see all these particular functions mentioned the type of functions has been indicated here and we have drawn out the average complexity raw function points for each of this particular function and this indicates that this system is 57 unadjusted function point count this system is 57 unadjusted function point counts. Now, if you were to look at this particular number we need to now convert this unadjusted function point counts into adjusted function point counts by identifying the weightage or the degree of influence for the 14 general system characteristics looking at the 14 general characteristics these 14 characteristics have again been in shown on your particular slide so these range from data communication distributed function performance heavily used configuration transaction rates online data entry end user efficiency you know and so on and so forth and let's see now how are these particular degrees uh, how these particular general system characteristics are influencing our system and each of these particular characteristics will have to be weighted with 0 to 5 as a weight with 0 indicating no influence you know and 5 indicating the strongest influence on the system. Now, what will happen is in case you were to do this particular case, suppose all the 14 characteristics were to be given a uh, 0 influence, you would get a total degrees of influence of 0 and in case all of them were to be randomly given number 5, you will get a number 70, the average being 75. So, in function point calculations, 35 degrees of influence you know are considered as an average system 35 degrees of influence is considered as an average system. So, we say that the value adjustment factors is equal to TDI into 0 0.01 plus 0 0.65 thereby indicating that we give a weightage of 1 percent to every degree of influence which is in excess or less than the 35 the average degrees of influence. Okay. So, based on this situation we can now see that how much how are these particular degrees of influence you know as far as our system is concerned the marketing system is concerned. So, again look at the slide. So, you say in our system it is a PC based standalone system it is not a distributed system. So, the degrees of influence for these two are 0 performance you know some kind of a somewhat requirements not a very great deal stringent requirement, but some requirement demand is there you know it is not a heavily used configuration is the transaction rate is not heavy online data entry is important and end user efficiency is important because we are not really expecting computer professionals to be using and operating this particular system. The data update is online and we would like to have reusability in mind that is the way of thinking today. Okay ease of installation and ease of operations is also very important. Okay? But last but not the least we would like to facilitate change in the sense that we should be able to modify this particular system as and when required. So, if you add up all these particular degrees of influence you get a total of 30. So, our adjusted function point count is 30 into 0 0.01 plus 0.65 equal to 0.95. So, adjusted function point count is equal to 57 that is our unadjusted function point count multiplied by 0 0.95 approximately equal to 54 function points. So, our system is approximately 54 function points. Now, once we got this particular data we are now next interested in finding out how much will this particular system cost, how much is this particular system cost. So, again looking at the slide let us say that suppose you have decided that this particular system will be developed in C++ okay? and you know we got certain norms which tell you that in case you are using a COBOL kind of a language you know you would have about 15 hours per function point any cryptic language like C, C++, FoxPro or DBase or particular thing would take about 10 hours per function point and if you are using uh, RDBMS and SQL kind of a thing it will take about 6 hours per function point count. So, from our point of view we say that our rate is 10 hours per function point count okay? 
and then the development effort would be 54 function point counts into 10 into 8. So, 10 hours per function point, 8 hours per day. So, this gives us that the system requirement is 68 man days of effort. Now, if you assume that the cost of team is, let's take, uh, make an assumption that we like a team of 2, 1 plus 1, 2 and 1 a little senior and 1 a little junior. So, our average cost of manpower is 1000 rupees per day. Then we can calculate the cost of the system development effort as follows, you know. So, development equal to 68 multiplied by 1000 equal to 68000. Now, you can add the other components that are associated with the development of the system. User training for 5 days is that much and support is so much and the documentation, some extra copies that the client requires is so much, okay. And this total you need to add of course, some contingency and profit. In many cases, profit is not shown explicitly and the profit figures are added in the development cost itself, you know, it is a hidden kind of a number. But you know, just for simplicity, we have shown this particular kind of figure. If you take the total, then we can say that we could quote to our client 1,7800 or approximate somewhat some kind of a number as the total development effort for developing this particular system, total development effort for developing this particular kind of a system. Okay. Now, we can sum up our function point topic, say what are the main advantage of function point approach to software sizing. First and the most useful one is that FPA approach can be used during very early stages of development when the information available to the developer is very little. Second, the evaluation effort is very small, say about 1 percent of the total development cost. Okay. The method is very simple, fairly accurate, easy to learn. It is very easy to sort of explain this to the users and get a confirmation about the functions from the users. So, the users can easily tell you what is the EI and what is the EO and EQ and ILF and EIF kind of thing. So, this facilitates verification and last but not the least, you know, the method being so simple and all that, it does not require use of any software tools. What are the limitations of function point approach? Biggest limitation is it does not provide time estimates, you know, like in case you are required to tell the management how long will it take for you to develop this particular system, you have to take request to some other methods and you know the FPA method will not tell you that this particular software development project will take how long to develop. Next, it does not give you any phase wise breakup, it only tells you the total development effort is so much, it does not tell you how much is for analysis, how much is for design, how much is for coding, testing. So, you cannot really plan your resources based on these particular estimates. Uh, another limitation is that this uh, function point approach cannot be used for estimating the development of system software. It is used only useful for application software. If you had to develop system software or utilities or some such particular kind of thing, then the FPA approach is not good for that. Accumulated data for productivity is obviously required in all methods, but also in this particular. So, unless you have good productivity data, you are required to stick to certain industry norms of the kind that we mentioned. Okay. And last but not the least, it is a very major weakness of function point that it assumes that there is no change to software development productivity with the change in this or with the size of the project and it is documented enough number of time and enough number of authors in enough places that as the size of the project increases, the development productivity dramatically drops. Now, starting from that, let us now go to the next estimation technique of Kokomo or constructive cost model. Kokomo was originally proposed by Barry Bohem in 1981, you know is also published another particular book called Kokomo 2, but for the time being we will not go to that because you know it definitely involves use of some kind of software tool for making estimates. It is one of the, uh, Kokomo is one of the best documented method in public domain. It covers a broad spectrum of software development projects, you know starting from small software to large software and 
from new development to modification enhancements you know and all this particular kind of thing that we have been talking about. If you look at the slide we have basically the Kokomo has three development modes the organic semi detached and embedded. For our purpose the organic means application software development, semi detached means development of utilities and embedded means basically systems aimed at developing system software. Also there is a hierarchy of Kokomo models the basic intermediate and advanced and you know the accuracy of estimate goes on increasing as you go on using this particular methods and we will for the time being restrict ourselves to only basic and the intermediate Kokomo to see how this particular method is useful for making estimates. The biggest advantage we have already mentioned is that the method is useful for estimating both the time and the effort involved in developing the particular project okay but it has a major weakness and that is it requires a lines of code as an input it requires a lines of code as an input this means you cannot use Kokomo method for making estimates till you are fairly deep into the project till you are fairly deep into the project and you know it is from that point of view that uh, using Kokomo will mean that you have to wait till at least you are fairly close to end of analysis phase. Another particular thing is the lines of code is a very dicey term and from that point of view Boehm has described something called delivered source instruction. You know in Boehm's parlance the delivered source instruction you know or DSI are you know uh, sort of give you what is do's and don'ts or what is in and what is out you know. For instance uh, data declaration JCL formats and libraries will of course libraries to be included once will have to be included okay. But number of instructions per line and programming language used and the organizational coding standards all this particular kind of a jazz is not you know not taken care of in the DSI. DSI needs to be precisely defined before you can. So in case you are using Kokomo method then it is better that you exactly follow Boehm's definition of DSI, Boehm's definition of DSI. So DSI excludes undelivered support software, testing, utilities, uh, drivers, tubs, comments, generated code, substituted code, reuse code components. So it is in this particular context that one needs to be very careful about making sure that you got the right thing in and the right and you know got nothing else in the DSI that you can't. Now again look at the slide. Now once we got our initial data assume we have done some kind of a higher level design and you have been able to sort of make a broad sort of uh, structure as to what will and will not be part of your system. And here you see that we have decided that we are going to have three programs an update program and we are going to have a report program this report program will generate all the five reports that we need okay and there will be an inquiry program. So from our point of view there are going to be three programs in this particular system and then what we do using the Delphi and beta distribution kind of approach you know we get a group of two people together and ask them you know how big will the update program be and in this case you know the group seems to have concurred to say that it will be minimum 250 lines most likely 300 lines you know not more than 400 lines and then using a plus 4 b plus c by 6 kind of approach we can say that this particular module will be 308 lines okay. The query module will be 104 lines and report for all 5 reports together it will be 616 the total is going to be 1028 and our particular point of view and then this will constitute the 100 percent. So working backward you see that your update report is going to be 30 percent your query report is going to be 10 percent and report what you call your general reports are going to be 60 percent of the code okay. So we look at this particular kind of a data and look at the Kokomo equations now from that particular point of view. So if you look at the screen you see that there are two basic Kokomo equations organic mode we have only seen the application development organic mode okay mm man month as we have defined is equal to 2.4 kdsi into 
1.05. So, man month is in Kokomo's is saying is 152 hours or 19 working days in a month. Please remember a person works for 22 days, but 3 days may be occupied in either doing company's work, being on leave, away for training and so on and so forth. So, useful days out of 22 is going to be only 19 and it is assumed that it is not possible to substitute a software developer for a day on a day to day basis as a casual labor. Then KDSI is kilo developed de delivered source code instructions and if you look at that particular curve, you will see that as the size of the code goes on increasing, okay, the man month effort will go on increasing more than linearly, the man month effort will go on increasing more than linearly. Okay. Now, T dev is the time for development and this is given as 2.5 into mm rest. So, once you have done the mm calculation, you can substitute this figure here and this particular number indicates that uh, the time required for uh, developing the software is not linearly, is less than linearly proportionate to the site development effort. Thereby, like if you had 100 man month effort and 200 man month effort, the time to delivery for a 200 man month effort will not be twice as much as the time to delivery of the 100 man month effort. Now, once you got this particular data, you know, once you find the total number of man months and all that, you know, using mm divided by t dev, you can get something called full time software development personnel as the measure or the product indicating that how many people do we really need to deploy on this particular project, how many people we need to deploy on this particular project. Now, if you were to have this data, we need to now again do some adjustment factors. First, let us look at the adjustment factors and then see how these are used. Kokomo divides the adjustment cost as they call it, the cost drivers, divides the cost drivers into four groups, the product attributes the computer attributes, the personal attributes and project attributes. As I mentioned earlier, the product attributes, computer attributes and personal attributes to a large extent are not under the control of the project manager, whereas the project attributes are definitely within the control of the project manager. So, let us look at what are the basic cost drivers. If you look at the slides, first you have three product attributes, the required software reliability, the database size and you know product complexity. Again remember our friend Kalpana Chawla, in case you had to do a development for re-entry of a space capsule into the earth's atmosphere, you know then the reliability is required to be very high. Okay. Then here you have a situation where the size of the database to the size of the code, you know they definitely bear some kind of a relationship. And product complexity. So, in case you had to develop, suppose you had to re require to code something like uh, Danzig's algorithm or Karmarka's algorithm for linear programming, you know the logic is fairly complicated from your particular point of view. The second group of attributes are the computer attributes, this pertain to the machine that you are going to be using, the environment, you know. So, the execution time constraint in case you are required to you know, perform this particular job in certain days, the main storage constraint, the virtual machine. The virtual vol machine volatility means that the complete environment, the hardware and the software together, are you familiar with this particular kind of a thing would be very important. So, if you are used to developing software under a particular environment, hardware plus software, then you will find that the subsequent development under the same environment will be easier. Computer turnaround time is more appropriate for basically the bad jobs, but you know we really do not come across too many of these particular things in uh, the recent applications. Uh, personal attributes is the next particular thing that you have, analyst capability, application capability of the analyst, whether the application is fam uh, the analyst is familiar with the area in which he is doing that. Similarly, the programmer capability and the programming language experience and of course, the programmer if he is familiar with the entire working of the software on the, or the system on which he is going to do the development, then that would definitely be an added advantage for the project manager. Now, the three adjustment factors which are under the control of the project manager, project attributes is use of modern programming practices, understand this particular thing very well. 
that just by being systematic and using standard methods and you know structured approaches and all that kind of a thing, a very dramatic improvement in productivity is possible. Your productivity can improve further by use of software tools and there is very interesting particularly that schedule that means uh, you know there are two types of situations that you encounter in real life. One is you are pressurized to do the job as fast as possible. So, you want to schedule compression and there is some situation where you would like the schedule to be what you call elongated. Take a simple example if a company has a in-house job being done and suddenly it receives an order you know for uh, doing a customer's paid job it is likely that the in-house development will be put on the back burner and the project manager will be asked to go slow. Okay. So, in this particular manner if you were to look at it now there is an effort this again let us go back to our slide you have effort distribution multipliers you know for the cost drivers. Okay. So, all the 14 factors here and for the normal kind of thing you see all of them. Now, this is very different from FPA remember the adjustment factors in Kokomo are multiplicative in nature. So, you multiply one into another into another into another. So, that way if you only multiply 14 numbers into each other it can have a very dramatic effect on the total time uh, total adjustment that you are doing to the system. There is another interesting thing why to read if you look at all these particular factors they seem to go in only one direction from say 0 0.75 to 140 except the schedule goes from 123 to 1 and then again increases. What it means is even if you are doing a job slow, even if you are doing a job slow you know then the development efficiency drops, then the development efficiency drops. Okay? It also tells you that there is a lower bound for compressing a schedule to approximately 75 percent of the estimated time and there is also a upper bound for elongation of a particular project to about 60 percent of the estimated time. Okay. In this particular map we can get the adjustment factors. Now, if you were to again turn to our slides and our marketing example that we have been continuing we can see wherever we are affected in our this particular kind of thing. So, from our particular point of view the complexity is not very high the data is not very high but the time you know turnaround time may be very critical from our particular point of view and you may have a analyst capability is low and programmer capability is also low but the programmer is used to working in the environment that you are talking about but you have a very disciplined project manager and from that particular point of view okay you have very high scores on the use of no no extraordinary demands have been made on the schedule wise demands have been made on the developer. Okay. So, we are doing both using modern programming practices and using tools. So, from that point of view development efficiency. Uh, so, you multiply these numbers into each other you get a number 1.001 you get a number 1 point. So, in case now you have to use this particular data and do the calculations do the calculations you know then look at how we are the development effort comes to 2.4 into 1.028 k raised to 1.05 2.5 man months the adjustment effort is 2.5 into 1.001 equal to 2.5 man months and the adjustment adjusted effort in terms of man days comes to 48 man days of effort comes to 48 man days of effort. Then the T dev you can calculate 2.5 and substitute you know this particular 2.5 man months here uh, it is only a coincidence that these two figures are same but they mean they refer to two different data and you get an answer that the total time to deliver will be 3.54 months assume that you have 22 days in a month you, know, you could do the development can be completed in you know for so many months okay assuming you are working 5 days per week okay in case your development is to be done 6 days a week then you what you can do is convert 3.54 into number of working days and then divide by the number of working days. So, you say that this project can be delivered in 3 months the project can be delivered in 3 months provided you are working 
six days a week. Probably you're working six days a week. Okay. So in this particular manner, we get through the first particular part of Kokomo, and we have now been able to. We got one up on the FPA. We have been not only able to develop, make an estimate for the development effort. We have also tried to sort of say that how how this particular how long this particular development will take. Now we come to the next part of Kokomo. We would like to see that we would like to break up this particular time into schedule wise uh, what you call the phase wise development effort and the schedule. So if you were to look again at the slide, you have a Kokomo equations which tell you that how much percentage of the development time will be attributed to what phase. So, you know that in case you had a small project, ours is a small project less than 2 kdsi. So, the product design is going to take 16 percent of our development time. The programming is going to take 68 which if you want you can break it up into detailed design and coding and unit testing as 26 and 42 and then the integration and final testing is going to take 16 percent of the time. You might need an additional 6 percent time for the planning and the remaining part of analysis that may be required. Okay. Similar data is available for the other types of thing. You must realize that as the size of the project increases, okay, the coding and unit testing percentage goes down whereas you will find that from your particular point of view the integration and test percentage will dramatically go on increasing, increasing uh, the dramatically go. So, on similar lines you can have you also have the breakup that you are going to get for schedules okay? and the schedules that you have here as you have seen it takes 19 percent from it. Now, only one difference is the breakup for the programming is not given in this particular schedule breakup that you have here. It is not given in the schedule breakup that you have. Now, using this particular data if you were to now look at our marketing example we can easily say that the percentage mandate as seen from the earlier table you know is given here and the total effort is given here okay, in terms of days. So, 6 percent of the total development effort is going to be free 48 you know our development effort is 48 days 6 percent of that approximately 3. So, it is going to take 3 days of effort for doing the remaining planning and requirement you know 8 days for doing product design, 12 days for detailed design, 20 days for coding and testing and little offset here and you will require 8 days of effort for integration and testing. So, your total 100 percent development effort is 48 and of course, including the additional effort that you require for planning and remaining requirement it is 51 percent. So, in this particular manner we can do the job for effort and on exactly similar lines we can do this particular effort for schedule, we can do this particular effort for schedule. So, you see here that we got these are the percentages for the actual uh, particular percentages of the total time required for doing the development and you multiply by the time to develop that is 78 days and you get so many days for doing it. So, we can summarize and say that your product design for instance is going to take 8 days of effort spread over 15 days of time and your programming is going to take 32 days of effort over 49 days of time. Okay. And last but not least, your 8 days of integration effort is going to be spread over 24 days. Let us not relook at how we use the Kokomo approach. To begin with, we did a fairly deep work into our system to do a higher level design that is after getting the requirements and identified which are the main programs that we are going to write and we came out you know with some kind of a run chart from which we could easily say that we are going to have three programs the update program, the report program and the enquiry program. Once we got this particular thing then we used a combination of beta and Delphi technique assuming that we had more than one expert required to do the estimation actually this particular system is too small to require more than one experts, but in case you required you could use it you know using Delphi approach or wideband Delphi or any such approach or maybe by using a single person's estimation 
we used a beta distribution kind of approach and we made minimum, maximum and the most likely estimates in terms of the number of lines of code or delivered source instructions for each of the three program, the update program, the report program and the query program. Once we got this particular kind of a thing, the next particular thing was to plug the number of lines of code into the Kokomo organic equations to get the effort estimate for man months and to get the T dev, the time to develop estimate and from that also make an estimate for the full time software personnel required for doing this particular kind of a job. The next step was that we had adjustment factors, the product attributes, the computer attributes, the personal attributes and the project attributes. We ranked you know our system on each of these particular attributes and multiplied by the cost effort, cost driver effort multiplier that was given in a standard table and came out with the total adjustment factor. Noting that the adjustment factors are multiplicative in nature. Okay. In that particular sense, we got a number and once we had that particular thing, we could calculate the unadjusted man month effort for developing this particular system. Now, we also saw that you know the man months could be converted to man days and the T day in months could be converted to number of working days and we could manipulate this particular working days by working. Uh, either 5 days a week or 6 days a week, you could possibly think of working 7 days a week also. You can think of working 1 and a half shifts, you know, or 12 hour shifts, all kinds of things. But basically remember, the working days has to be the anchor for our calculations. Uh, doing this particular thing, you will see that the development productivity will remain the same irrespective whether you are working 5 days a week or 6 days a week and our development productivity turned out to be about 411 lines of delivered source code instructions per man month of effort. So, thus you know with the conclusion that we can now assign work to different particular groups of people at different points of time, we could go ahead. In case you were to use the next level of Kokomo, you could also get an activity wise breakup for each development phase which we are not going to look at at this particular point of time. Now let us divert our attention to the next particular part was the phase breakup and the distribution by phase you know is given for different different tables are available. We saw only one table you know for organic model but similar tables are available for semi detached and embedded models. And it gives you a breakup for the total development effort and the total development schedule in terms of the product design, the programming effort and integration and testing effort. So doing these kind of things, you could come out with a conclusion and say that how long will the system take to develop, you know how much analyst effort will be required, how much development effort will be required, how much coding effort will be required and approximately when you will require this particular kind of thing. This data will be very useful for the top management for allocating resources to your project. Let us now divert our attention to the third technique is use of network analysis for estimating okay, the time required and the effort required for individual programs in the system. A very quick review of steps involved in network analysis, you know we are already familiar with things like work breakdown structure, but first you know you need to enumerate the activities, list of activities. Once you got the list of activities you need to draw a precedence table, you also know what is the precedence, we have already seen that in detail before. Then you can draw an activity diagram, estimate the early likely and late times for each of these particular activities. So, you can use like beta distribution kind of approach. Once you got this mean time required for doing each of these particular activities, you can calculate 6 different times associated with the system, what we call the earliest event time and the latest event time associated with each event and earliest starting time, latest starting time, earliest finishing time and latest finishing time 
with each activity. Once you got this data, you can easily calculate the slacks and the floats, the slacks for the events and the floats for the time activity times that you have and you would get a critical path. Okay? Uh, from the critical path, you could always allocate resources and then convert the network into a scheduling network and draw the corresponding resources histogram. Now, how will you go about doing this in our particular project? So, again, let us look at the let us look at the slides. Okay? We start with our act 3 programs and for you know giving a little twist to the particular matter, let us assume that each of these particular programs can be done in two parts. First particular part is do the specification and the design and then the other is to do coding and testing. This has been done so that you find that many times you know that the coding and testing and you know the specification writing are uh, dependent on each other, but the subsequent programs may depend only on the specification part of the earlier program and not necessarily on the coding and testing of that particular program. So, we now show that we have two parts of the update program and we have another two parts for the query program and we have another two parts for the report program. So, three programs have been split into six activities, their precedence relationships have been identified here. Then we do the integration. Now, there are you know the designer will have to decide how to integrate the system. But from our point of view, let us assume for simplicity's sake that we have decided that we will do the integration in step. First, we will integrate the update program with the query program and then the update program and the report program and then we will integrate all of them together at the time of system testing and of course, the acceptance testing. Now, here we need to make some assumptions. What kind of assumptions do we need to make? Let us make an assumption that the amount of time required for doing integration is directly proportional to the number of programs being integrated, number of units or programs being integrated at each step. That means, if you are integrating two programs, the effort required will be two units and in case you are integrating four programs at the same time, the effort required will be four units of time. Now, making this particular assumption, then each stage of our testing, we can put on and how many programs really are going into each of this particular stage. So, in our case, we have identified that during the system and the acceptance testing, we are putting three programs together and during the update and query integration, we got two programs and update and report, we got two programs. So, this is all the entire precedence that we have got within these particular activities. Okay? Now, Looking at this particular data, we can now bring up our Kokomo tables and see how we can get a detailed dis backup of that. So, again look at the slides. What we got here? We have now regrouped the data. We put all the you know specifications together, update, query and report together and we have update, query and report for coding and testing together and then the integration still remains where we are, the precedence is a given. Now, this phase effort, so we have seen from the earlier Kokomo kind of exercise, the phase effort involved in writing these three or doing these three parts, the update and you know the specification for update query and the report program together is going to be 12 days and you know the programming effort and coding effort is going to be for 20 days for these particular three activities and then for integration, all the integration and testing put together are going to take 8 days. We also know that within this particular breakup, the weightage of these 3 programs is 30 percent, 10 percent and 60 percent, 30 percent, 10 percent, 60 percent here also and we have made the assumption that the number of total number of programs integrated you know in the steps that we have will determine the de uh, breakup of the integration time. So, from our point of view, if you look at the testing time, the first two integrations required you know two programs each and the next two integrations required three programs each. So, the total number of programs that went into such testing steps you know of integrating and testing together is 10 programs you know. So, we say that the total effort involved for doing the testing can now be broken up 
integration and system and acceptance testing can be broken up in this particular proportion. So, you go back to your slide, you see that you have made this 2 by 10, 2 by 10, 3 by 10 and 3 by 10 as the same. Now, by when you multiply 12 by this numbers, of course, the corresponding numbers as the percentages, you get a activity effort. Now, I have rounded up all the numbers to approximately one day, you know, not, not more accurate than one day and from that point of view, it might have some kind of a apparent anomaly in terms of all the four activities getting two days each. So, we got this data and now we can easily draw a network. So, we here we draw a network for our software development coding and integration testing kind of effort. You got all the activities, we got two dummy activities as we have already seen and if you look at this particular thing, then you find that the critical path that we have is only 27 units. Now, here we are making an assumption, you know, that the amount of effort that you have, you know, is the equal number of days that you are spending, but that really is not going to be true. Now, we have seen that this effort from the total time, elapsed time for completing the project that is available at our disposal from this point to this point is 78 days. So, what we need to do now is take this particular data and break it up into some kind of accordion, you know, so that we multiply all the elapsed time calculations by 78 divided by 27, which is the total critical time that we got, which gives us a factor of 2.33, you know. And now, if you look at this particular slide, you will find that the update is going to be, you know, 4 in 2.33 and this is going to give you the elapsed time for completing each activity. So, remember the earlier times that we got, you know, this particular thing gives you the effort involved in completing the activity, this gives you the elapsed time in completing the activity. It also identifies which activities are critical and in case you have to compute the critical path, you find that this particular number comes, you know, fairly close to what number we are supposed to get from our earlier Kokomo table, you know, that is 78 minus the data that is associated with the earlier part of doing the remaining part of analysis and so on and so forth. Okay? So, thus we come to the conclusion that the time required for doing the job and the effort involved in doing the job is shown there. So, we go to the next particular slide now and we can draw this data as a Gantt chart. Okay? So, here you see that over a time period of time we have indicated, you know, which particular activity, when it is going to start and when it is going to finish. There is of course, certain amount of slacks and all that associated with these particular activities. And then in case you were to do as early as possible kind of a schedule, then we will get a histogram of this particular type, the one that we have shown below. Okay? So, this is how the breakup will go for doing the program development effort. Now, from our particular point of view, you know, we will look at it and say, okay, that how does this help us in completing the job? So, we did three things. To begin with, we early in the game, we used FPA technique and made an overall effort estimation for the system. Then we got the job and then we did a some kind of a broad estimate, you know, some broad higher level design and estimated the number of lines of code for the system and then used the Kokomo method and went to management with a plan to indicate, you know, how much resource of what type will be required approximately when. Then when we got the resource, you know, for instance, only we talked of the program development effort, you know, then we were able to say that we have so much time available at your disposal and we are required to deliver the project in so many days and there are so many programs. We decided what is going to be the development strategy, what is going to be the integration effort and integration, actually the integration pattern and you know, then the integration effort and we were able to come out with the numbers, you know, for the time required for completing each activity. And then using the PET CPM approach, you know, we could easily come out with the time required for completing, starting and finishing each individual.
program and while making sure that the total development time was not you know contradicting those calculated by the Kokomo effort.